In this session, we are going to discuss about various perspectives of urban design. Urban design is concerned with the creation and adoption of the built environment, both in terms of built structure and the open spaces between them. It is a practice that works with the material dimensions of the urban fabric and implies the physical changes to the current conditions. While urban design may have a social effects or pursue social goals, it does so primarily through shaping the material dimensions of the settlements. Urban design introduces spatial order. Urban design initiatives led to changes in the built environment. But these changes don't happen at random. Instead, they are based on a set of rules that designers use to imprint order in space, whether it be useful, aesthetically pleasing or something else entirely. Urban design is therefore a practice that not only entails some material alterations to the settlements, but also arranges them in accordance with specific ideas. Urban design acts in the name of public interest. Urban design is a practice that pursues collective goal in the name of public good. As a result, urban design is politically significant activity. Indeed, recognizing publicly relevant urban assets, it is a process that follows standard political debates and procedures. In short, the primary goal of urban design is to create improve and protect the public realm through the creation and adoption of the built environment. Urban design expresses social values. It is a practice that uses built form to express its social values. It is worth noticing here that the public interest is not limited to public spaces but also to collective values and cultures manifested physical private transformations. This is an interesting topic because while the values that different civilizations use to identify and express themselves, it will change over time, their physical manifestation in cities. It endures from generation to generation, passing on uses, conventions and practices. In summary, urban design practice is bound to culturally specific contexts that hold long-standing values. Urban design works at scales larger than a single building and across boundaries. Urban design is a practice that goes beyond the single plots, encompassing the multiple properties at scales larger than a single building. For example, urban design can take place at the present level or higher. As a result, urban design considerations may arise across a range of spatial scales from the very local for example, a small square or a single local street to the metropolitan scale. Urban design is a creative goal-oriented activity. The practice of urban design is a deliberate act organized and managed by urban designers with the goal of introducing, guiding and moderating changes in the current state of affairs. Design as opposed to something that emerges spontaneously without central coordination necessitates human intellect, ideas, plans and guided process and thus someone capable of generating and conceiving its contents. It is a deliberate goal-oriented activity carried out to achieve specific objectives. As a result, urban design is frequently presented as a work of art or a technical practice. Urban design is performed directly and indirectly. Urban design can be done directly or indirectly. In the first case, the concern of urban design is the creation of project that visualizes specific solution. A visualization based approach, drawings, modelings, renderings or similars to organize concrete spatial arrangement is emphasized. In the second case, the urban design is concerned with the normative sphere that is the establishment of rules and other guidelines that restricts or specifies what and within what limits other urban factors can act independently to create a future spatial solutions and arrangements they prefer. A legalistic approach is emphasized in the second case. Urban design 
is a practice requiring multiple skills. The practice of urban design necessitates three main abilities. Number one, the ability to comprehend variable territorial circumstances. Number two, the ability to hold specific normative positions regarding how space should be organized and transformed. The third one, the ability to plan not only the intended outcome but also the process by which it will be possible to achieve it. This entails, for example, being able to work within specific socio-political framework such as collaborating with many stakeholders who have varying interests and possess the technical know-how necessary to transform the HACI concepts into actionable and realistic strategies.